Hey guys, Lily Jean Berry back for the Faction in Kill Your Stereo. So excited about who we're chatting with today. Stand Atlantic. They are going from strength to strength. And this week, as they prepare to unleash their third album, Fear Upon Us, I'm blessed to have vocalist Bonnie and bass player Mickey here to tell us all about it. How are you guys? We're Good. Live, live <laughs> Sorry, we're street. in the street. Live on the streets of LA. I love somehow this. we're the craziest people here. Yeah. <laughs> I love this. We've had like connection issues and and getting it all sorted and 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 you guys like just classic LA style standing out the front of a Starbucks. This, this is <laughs> how did you know? <laughs> I feel like it's set such a great tone already that this is just going to be such a fun chat. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be chaotic as fuck. I bet you someone's gonna come in and like take over somehow. You know what? It's about come and join us. This is gonna be a great. <laughs> You're welcome. We invite everyone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's album release week. Um, fear, fear stands for fuck everything and run, which is kind of how it's felt to exist in this weird COVID world, particularly here in Melbourne for the last few years. Um, tell us like how this album came to be. I mean, it's only been a while since you released Pink Elephant. So how did you create fear and how, how did this baby happen? Uh, I hate to say it, but it was over the two years where no one could do anything. But um, I think just generally speaking, like we were all very, very angry at the world. And I felt like I didn't have control of my life couldn't do anything that I wanted to do. My whole life was taken away. It felt like um, it was a fucking rough two years. Um, and I think the album just kind of speaks for itself. And like, it definitely showcases all the frustrations and like annoyances that I was having. And I was in a shit place, to be honest. I just fucking hated everything. And that's what happened with the album. I'm sorry, there's not enough hope in the album or anything like that. It's just fucking angry. I'm never going to yeah. like. I think that's yeah, really important, right? Like, is when you're feeling that level of emotion, you've got to find a way to take it out, right? Yeah, exactly. And like, it's getting so much pressure, like, to write this thing. And I was like, bro, I haven't lived my life. Like, how am I supposed to write about anything? And then usually what I do when I feel that way is like, okay, well, I'm frustrated that I can't write. So I'll just write about that. And obviously, I didn't want to be like, yeah, COVID sucks, fuck the virus, like nothing like that. <laughs> so, but I was like, well, how am I feeling? I'm feeling annoyed at this whole situation. And there's things in my personal life going on as well. And it all kind of like piles on top of each other and just makes for an aggressive, like fuck the world kind of vibe. Well, it's on that note, it's been mentioned that this album is a fuck you to the conventional bullshit Hollywood style story that musicians tell you fall out of their ass. That sentence alone. Where are we? <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> <laughs> that sentence yeah. alone has, you know, so much to dissect. Um, but you can hear in every track that there is a level of frustration. Um, but with that comes such a level of power in each song, particularly for me. Um, I heard it so much in Van Gogh. Um, I want to know, like, what was the writing process like um, to get all these feelings out? Like, was there a moment that you were just kind of like, I'm fed up, like, and you have to hear it? Sort of, yeah. I guess it's more so like, basically like I don't really talk about my feelings too much in real life and I kind of that's I don't know that's just who I am I guess and the only the only way I've ever kind of put the lid on not put the lid on but like closed the chapter of a feeling and like mm -hmm. gotten over something and like kind of stopped internalizing it was by writing music and like lyrics and stuff so that's just always come naturally to me so obviously that's the way I'm gonna write about this. I actually kind of just forget your question. I just went on a tangent in my own head and now can't No, I love it. Just keep going. <laughs> I love it. it oh. There's gotta be a level at which that felt therapeutic, I can imagine, to go like, okay, yeah. like it's no longer in my head, it's in a tangible place, and now everyone else can hear it and align with that because we're all frustrated too, right? Yeah, it helps me get it out and like feel like, all right, cool, I've dealt with it. Even, I guess I haven't dealt with it, but it's like my own kind of form of therapy and it makes me at least feel better about it because it's like, you've gotten it out. It's like that whole, like, um, that concept that 
if you're feeling a certain way and you like just write how you're feeling, it's like free form writing or whatever it's called. And then you kind of like tear up the piece of paper and throw it out. It's kind of like getting out feelings and that's the same kind of thing. Um, so yeah, that's just kind of what's happened. So there's never really been a moment where I was like, yeah, people need to hear how I'm feeling. It's just kind of like, well, people are going to hear. How I'm feeling. Yeah, <laughs> so. I love that. I love that. And was there any particular song that like felt the easiest to write when you were getting all of this out? Oh, fuck. Probably, um, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. It's it's always hard because, like, you have to find the balance of, like, not making it too brutal or, like, too, I don't know. Like, no, nah, I don't know how to answer that question. I truly just don't know how to answer that question. No, that's totally, <laughs> that's totally fair enough. And obviously, Mickey, like, as playing bass and hearing the songs when they came to you at whatever point, like, how did you feel like you were able to put your emotion into these songs and um, and have your say as well? Internet is a bitch and we got disconnected for a few hours. Mickey and Bond came back to us after about two hours and we picked up where we left off. Guys, we got cut off. Um, Tech with internet and various other challenges but it's been about two and a bit hours and we're able to reconnect and um I just want to throw a huge thank you to you guys for for being able to make this work and coming back <laughs> for okay. finding a spot that worked maybe <laughs> hopefully potentially yeah <laughs> it seems like we're all sorted now um right before we were disconnected um mickey i wanted to throw to you and ask you you know obviously we spoke with bon a lot about how she oh. no. Ooh. I don't know what just happened and now I'm having technical issues on my side. Okay. Um, <laughs> Look at her. Love it. Basically the best and worst interview ever. Like, <laughs> no, it's good. Chaos. It is. It's the chaos um, mode activated. So I wanted to ask you, um, how did you feel like you were able to put your emotion and frustration from the last few years this record and, and how does it feel for you um, knowing you're only a couple of days from release? If I'm being honest, it kind of like felt, um, I, I can't remember if we spoke about it before, but with this album, because of COVID, we recorded everything separately. Um, yeah, Bon, you're in the UK, yeah. right? Uh, she came over. Yeah, I came over. Yeah. yeah, so she came over, but um, obviously because of but COVID well and restrictions. Yeah, <laughs> might as well not have. Because uh, of like restrictions and everything, we didn't get to go to any studios. Shit. We recorded everything at, Stevie, like our producer's house, except for drums, which we, which we recorded at Jono's house. Like, so we recorded everything at home. And just as we were gonna kind of get together and do everything, we, the other restrictions came in like one person per uh, whatever kind of thing. So we all went in separately. I didn't see Bon record her vocals. She didn't see me play bass. I didn't see Potter play guitar. Like it felt really like we weren't recording an album almost. So like, it's kind of a bummer in the sense that, like, I don't think I did, like, let off any frustration. Like, <laughs> you got like, more frustration. If anything, it was more frustration because I like, had all these, like, really cool ideas, which still, like, came together separately. But, like, Molotov, for example, um, we you were originally going to, because it's so raw, yeah. we were going to do it in a live room and just, like, track it live and, like, oh, that just make it really raw. Um, yeah. And we still kind of, like, worked around it by, like, we all just did one take like individually and like kind of left it kind of raw it's like we did we got around it obviously but yeah we didn't get to do all these cool things so I think if anything I left more frustrated <laughs> but um release week yeah I kind of forgot it was release week yeah and we got we got to LA and they're like here's all these press here's all these interviews here's all these like acoustic installs you're doing and I was like oh man it's release week <laughs> it feels like we haven't had like a release week in ages like yeah. properly like the last well, time we think elephant this release week was Nothing. Yeah, you sit. You just like do a bunch of Zoom interviews, and then you sit back on your bed and watch fucking Netflix. Yeah, <laughs> like, like I guess it's out now. Sick. Yeah, and then Skinny Dipping release week was just like, because it was like just the beginnings of the band. Like I feel like it was just like, oh, here's an in store. Yeah, that's it. Wasn't it. We didn't much. really do anything crazy. So this has been like a crazy busy week. I yeah. Guess. So like your more frustration. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you're able to get, like with release week, you know, you're able to get the um, the release yeah, that you yeah. deserve and, and this album is able to get the attention it deserves and you're able to give it yeah. the 
he deserves and I, I think that's really magical um and I didn't even <laughs> think about that you you think about how you're not able to tour it and stuff like that but not being able to promote it really that's mm. that's really yeah too um so I, I guess the releasing of frustration will be yeah. when like the album's out and then I feel good and then we'll be playing it and like we start to with the day it comes out so it's like that's when I'll be like it's <laughs> now, out. It's now yes now it's good yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually going to throw in and touch the tour a little bit. Um, you know, it's only been about a year and a half since um, Pink Elephant came out. Um, and then whilst you've been able to do a couple of shows, I think you were you did some over in Europe. Is that correct? At the start of the year? Um, we, yeah, we did the UK. And yeah, we also did the US. But yeah, we did the US yeah. too, yeah. Yeah, sick. Um, but Australia, we haven't seen you proper play live for a really long time. And now you've got... Dude. Like, you're going to have two albums of content to smash out. Um, I guess, tell us a little bit about, I know we've still got a little bit of time till the show is here, but tell us a little bit about like what you have planned and, and let's get us super pumped. 10 hour set first list. Of all, <laughs> <laughs> we don't even have enough songs for that. Yeah. Um, first of all, I'm just going to say like the last time we headlined um, Australia was on the Skinny Dipping album and we played in Sydney, we played a 250 cap room and now we're doing 1500 and we're just like, what the fuck? <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah, in that regard, it's like fucking crazy. But yeah, um, I don't know, we get asked like, what do you have in store for like a tour? And it's like, well, we're gonna play songs and everyone's gonna have a good time. Like, <laughs> we're gonna yes. Definitely going to be like upgraded Stand yeah. Atlantic, I would say. Well, definitely like we're going to try and at least, you know, pay homage, homage, whatever homage. it is. Homage. Yeah. Uh, to Pink Elephant, obviously, because we never got to play it. So yeah, we're, we're going to try chuck... and split the set list so we they so both get love. But yeah. yeah. Awesome. Bit of, like a bit of yeah. fear, a bit of Pink Elephant. Yeah. A bit of old stuff. I wish we could say something cool like, we're renting a dinosaur to come. Like... <laughs> It's going to be a bouncing castle in this fucking marsh, but no. <laughs> no, it's just going to be sick. It's I think great. that everyone's just going to be so fucking excited to actually watch you play. Um, you could honestly come out in passion sacks and give it 50% effort, and I reckon everyone... I do that. Vote. That's actually a great shout. Thanks. <laughs> oh gosh i love this um <laughs> touch a little bit more to some of the tracks on um on fear you know the thing i really love about this record when i was listening to it is that there's no song that feels like simple or chill like there's there's yeah. all these different musical technical elements thrown in obviously a number of features um you know, we've, we've talked extensively about the frustration of the, the word and you can feel that with like the punch that's really behind each song. Um, I, I don't know, I just like, it just feels like this natural step up from the last two records. But even saying that, they were so huge. So I didn't even know that you could could step it up, I guess. Um, did you kind of throw all expectations out the window and I guess just go fuck it? this is how we want to do it. And, and no, yeah, we might put a little bit here that you weren't expecting and a little bit there that you yeah. weren't expecting, but it was just what you want to create. Did you feel you had creative freedom? Like talk me through that. Yeah. We definitely had creative freedom. We always do, but I think like, um, oh, I just lost my complete train of thought, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think also like for the production side, um, and like all the songs are very angry and like frustrated and all that kind of thing. And I think because I didn't really write a like happy lyrics to be like, but it's all going to be okay. You know, I, uh, we just wanted to also like kind of capture um, like kind of sound bites from like the studio when we were in there. Um, me and Stevie and everyone just like cracking up and having a good time. Cause it's like, I just wanted to show like, you can be in the shit, but if you've got people around you that care about you and you can like, feel like friendship is so fucking important. I don't want to be that like pop punk family, like friends, but like, you know, having it's people around you. Yeah, you fucking need it. And like, that's what was so lacking as well. And what we love about touring as well is like, you're with your best mates the whole time. And it's sick. <laughs> so yeah, we definitely wanted to capture that as well, like with the record and to show people like you can still have a good time even if you feel like you're fucking in the shit. 
I can't remember um, exactly which track it was, but, um, and, you know, I think it actually happened. On, there were these moments with, like, yeah, little, like, um, drum and bass elements and some sort of yeah. almost dubstepy moments. And, like, I love that you've got, if you, if you listen to it on the surface, you're, like, super punky, uh, super punky pop punk record. But then when you really look into it, there's so many fun albums in there. And I love that you guys you know took those those risks and just chucked it in yeah. yeah because that was the other thing as well it was like the world was so fucked like we didn't know 100 whether we could even make a record after this so it's like we don't know what's going to happen um so if this was our last record this is what we wanted it to sound like and this is and we wanted to take every chance we could to do something that really represented exactly what we want to do with this band and um that's why I think it's our best record to date, personally, just because it's so like there's something for everyone, and we didn't have any um, we didn't have any expectations besides beating the last two records. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, in terms of like style or anything, there was no expectation. I didn't have any like idea of what I really wanted. I was just like, no, nah, we're just gonna like see what the fuck comes out and try everything and do do some cool shit that we don't feel like other people are, are doing or you know. Yeah, sorry, I rambled, but no, I love yeah. it. I love it, <laughs> and you can hear that when you hear the record. Um, and obviously, speaking of hearing the record, it's only a couple of days away. Um, this is one of my favorite questions to ask, but usually um, your least favorite question to answer. Um, I have to ask, what's your favorite song that you haven't that we haven't heard yet that you're excited for everyone to hear? Yes, I just you asked first? your favorite. Um, <laughs> Wait, wait, so, so haven't heard. Yeah, so like a, uh, just pick yeah. a non-single. I'd say, oh, mine was going to be dumb, but then maybe na- Nails in the Back. Nails from, nails the, from back? the Back. Nails from the Back. That's going to be my favourite. So we had to fight it. Like, that got <laughs> yeah. in my head for like so long afterwards. I was like, how have I listened to this song once and I've been singing it for like two hours? <laughs> that song, I that song like a, almost didn't make the album. I it was a weird thing it. about that song because like every time I hear it, I remember exactly where I was when I like wrote that because I was literally sitting in my fucking chair that's broken like doesn't even have a back on it it's just got like you know how on an office chair it's got the two bits yep but it just had the pole like the the (laughs) back had broken off like I'd given up and I was just sitting on it and I had my legs up on the table there was fucking noodles everywhere because I didn't clean my room for ages because I was fucking depressed and like I was just like doodling on my guitar being like and then like had that and it's just so weird when I think about that I'm like I wrote that in my fucking underwear in the grossest scenario <laughs> and environment and now it's like sounds like this like perfected like <laughs> little I don't know polished thing it's cool. Yeah. Like how did, but, um, how did we get from here to here? <laughs> yeah, it's so yeah, I don't know, that trips me out. I love it. Um and uh yeah, but I think for me my favorite track would be I just got a soft spot for it, which is Blood Clot, just because it's probably the most like personal song for me and like means a lot. <laughs> Blood Clot has my favorite bass line in it. So oh, well, oh, well, 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 well. <laughs> I have to say, um, I think I touched on it earlier, like um, when we were talking about sort of the concept of the album per se, but like Van Gogh was a huge standout for me. I just, oh, true, yeah. I just was like, I can, I can hear like uh, when that line that I touched on earlier, the it's a fuck you to conventional bullshit Hollywood, that that line, Mm -hmm. like I feel like I could just hear that on that track. And I was just like, this feels like encapsulates the whole album for me and there's so much energy in it and um yeah I, that's like, definitely a fave for us as well yeah yes. I think we always thought that would be like a little dark horse that one yeah definitely yeah thank you well, for saying that hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we can hear that and all the tracks possible on your tour um guys thank you so much for your time everybody listening Please pre-order Fear Now. Fuck everything and run. Run right into JB Hi-Fi. Fucking artist. Yeah, yeah, boy. Wherever you pick up. Sanity. Sanity. Sanity <laughs> if there's scores left. Um, Keep it alive. Fear Now. It's out this Friday. And make sure you pick up a ticket to the Aussie tour as well. It's going to be fucking epic. Um, good yeah, luck. baby. Good luck with the US run. Thank guys. you. Thank you very much. Um, congratulations in advance for release week, and we can't wait to see you back here really <laughs> soon. We'll be back soon. See you. <laughs>